Okay, so what we've got now are these lovely orbits, but you can see that some of these orbits cross into other areas of the map. Um, incidentally, what I'm going to do just uh, for the rest of this tutorial is I'm just going to turn off my sheets. I'm going to click on the Sheets function here, and I'm going to deactivate my sheets as a default. I'll just redraw. That will just make some of these lines uh, not faded, so it'll make them a little bit easier to see. As you can see, these orbits do cross outside of this strip, so we need to find a way of removing the excess pieces that we don't want. To do that, we're going to use the Trim to Entity tool here, and when you activate that, it asks you to select the entity to trim to. Well, that's going to be basically this column along here. Um, now we're going to select the entities to trim. So I'm going to select this one, this one, this one, this one. Now if we redraw, you'll now see that these lines have actually been trimmed to this edge here, so they don't cross into the other systems. There you go, you can now see the orbit lines on uh, this part of the map. I'm going to zoom in and start putting some planets in. Now to do this, I'm going to select uh, our planet symbol library. We can see that we've got some planet symbol libraries here already, but I just want to make sure we've got the right ones. So I'm going to click on this button here, planets. And you'll see that Campaign Cartographer gives us two types of catalogs. One is 3D and one is flat. Now, you, this is very easy to make a mistake here. I'm going to actually select the 3D planets and then show you what happens when you use this symbol catalog versus this one. Let's click on Planets 3D. We'll select a planet. We'll use a, a nice dry planet. And I'm going to put it, say, in this orbit here. Click. Now because it's 3D, we have a line which is automatically drawn above and below the, uh, the plane. So if I click that now, I can give it a text, I'm going to call this Planet Wrong. You can see what it's actually done is it said it's four light minutes above that elliptical plane for that orbit. That's fine if you're doing very large system maps and, and particularly for solar maps, but it's not what I want in this particular map. So what I'm going to do is undo all of that. I'm going to come back to my catalog here, planets, and I'm going to select flat. Not much of a change. We'll now select uh, that planet again. This is actually a different symbol. Um, I'm going to put it back on that orbit and click, and you can see it just stays there. There's none of that automatic line drawing for you. So when you do select your cat symbol catalogs, make sure you select flat when you're doing this sort of map. I'm going to put a much smaller planet in this orbit here, so I'm going to open up this catalog here, I'm going to choose or maybe a bit, a bit of a green planet, and to make it smaller I'm going to right click, which brings up our um, symbol properties editor, and instead of making it 0.9, I'm going to bring it down to about 0.5. There we go, nice small planet. I won't stick it immediately beside that planet because that would make it a little bit difficult to read, I'm just going to move it over. And to do that, I'm going to turn the snap off so I can position it right on the orbit where I want it. There we go, we now have two planets. Uh, we're now getting to about six, uh, eight light minutes out, so we might go for a uh, more of a, a habitable planet. We'll choose this one, it's quite Earth like. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm going to bring this up to 0 0.9, the right click 0 0.9, and I'm going to position it there. Actually, I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to put my snap on again and I'm going to position it on a snap line as well here now the reason that I place that back into the snap is that means that I'll be able to place a, an orbit for moons directly in the center of that planet so I'm going to click over here bring up my orbit tool again click on the orbit tool and I'm going to draw a little orbit now it'll be a little bit over exaggerated we might give this place two moons, there we go better save my work. So now we can see we've got a, a very close inner planet, uh, one slightly further out, uh, an Earth analog planet. I'm going to create a second Earth on a let, uh, <laughs> second Earth analog planet in this orbit here. We'll place it down here. I'll also give it a moon orbit and I'll just give it one one moon. There we go. Um, I'm now going to throw in a gas giant because Every good system has to have the gas giant. Hmm, I 
think I might use this as my gas giant. I'm going to right click and I'm going to up the size quite a lot. I'm going to make it 2. Uh, actually, I might make it a little bit more. Let's make it 2.5. Perfect. So a large gas giant here. Let's expand out now. I'm going to place another gas giant on here. So I might use a slightly different looking planet. This one. And we'll make this, say, 0.5. Oh, that's a bit small. 0.5, there we go. That's probably a bit too big. Let's bring it down to say 0.3. Perfect. Now, I'd like to put some moons around these gas giants. So I'm just going to zoom in, select my orbit tool. Orbit, 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 orbit. Lots of moons around that gas giant. And likewise with this one, orbit tool, orbit, orbit, orbit and a large orbit. There we go. Now note the moon orbits will not be in scale to uh, how far the planets are away from the Sun, nor will the planets actually be in scale to the Sun. Now let's go and put some moons into this orbit. I'm going to create ooh, a rather hostile looking moon and we'll make that 0 0.5 in size. We'll say place that in orbit here. I'm going to get an ice planet, move it here. Uh, we might get a or an alien looking planet. I'm just going to reduce the size of that moon down to be quite small because it's in a very close orbit. And then I'm going to place a smallish but possibly habitable world, 0 0.4 size. Might make that a little bit larger, 0 0.5, in an orbit here. There we go. And that Earth like planet has its own moon, which will choose this dry planet. We'll reduce that size down to say 0.2, make it really small. There we go. We'll zoom out. Now let's zoom into this and we'll put some planets in here. Sorry, some moons. One moon. We might make this different color, right click, make this slightly larger again, 0.4, there we go, just changing the uh, planets if they look suitable for this environment, so there we go. Now this system looks rather busy but these are the inner planets. Let's now work on the outer planets and actually before I do this I'm going to click over here the stars I'm going to choose flat stars and I'm going to pretty up that star as well we'll make this one whoop that's way too big 0.7 still too big 0.5 just about right there we go now this strip was in light minutes this strip is in light hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click I'm going to make my Sun half the size 0.25 I'm going to use the snap tools to get it on center horizontally and click in place and while I've got this I might also reduce it again to 0.15 and bring it into our light weeks. There we go. Now let's draw some orbits into this area. I think I'll save my work first and click on my orbit tool. Starting with the Sun, I'm going to draw an orbit which is quite far out and one which is much further out and there. Now as you can see these orbits have crossed over our other areas. Again the easiest way to solve this is to use the trim tool. I'm going to select our column and then I'm going to trim this line, I'm going to trim this line, and I'm going to trim this line. If we redraw, you'll see that it has trimmed over this side, but it hasn't trimmed this side. So let's trim those as well. Click on the Trim tool, select the object to trim to, and then select the objects to trim. And 
when we click on redraw, you now see that these orbits have been trimmed neatly just to this area. So, let's put some planets in. We'll click on our planet symbols, make sure we select the flat ones, and we'll use some smaller planets here. Generally, the further out you get, the smaller your planets will be. Um, let's find something a little bit grim looking. I'm going to make that slightly larger and we'll place it in an orbit there. We'll use a different looking planet, we'll make it a little bit smaller, 0.15. We'll place it in this orbit just here. And finally, a very dark planet, 0.1, we'll place it in this orbit here. Let's put a couple of moons around. I think this one will be good. It could be any of them, it's up to you. There we go, there's a bit of an orbit. And we'll throw a little moon in there. Maybe we'll use this one for a moon. Better reduce the size down to 0 0.5. Done. Finally, we're looking at the light weak section. Now, there aren't too many planets which go out light weak, so this is really the surrounding areas. So what I might do is now draw an elliptical orbit around here to show uh, a very um, offset um, uh, orbit for a, a, an asteroid belt. So I'm going to click, select elliptical orbit, select the center of the elliptical orbit, which is in the center of the Sun, draw out its major axes, and I think I'll have it at a slight angle, and then you just stretch out that orbit. So there we go. Likewise, we're going to need to trim this, so what I'm going to do is select the trim tool, going to select where I want to trim to, that column, select the entity to trim, and redraw. I'm also going to trim this side as well just in case, so I'm going to select the trim tool, select this side, select our element, redraw. Done. Let's put an asteroid belt in there. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. We'll make a point 0.1. Uh, it still might be a bit small. Let's make a point 0.3. There we go. And there's the asteroid belt. Might put a couple of them in there just for show little asteroids along the way. So there we have it, a standard system with a K-class star, a number of inner planets that are totally inhospitable, an Earth-like planet, a gas giant, um, then another a large gas giant with actually a potentially habitable planet around it. Uh, as we extend further out we can see that we've got some other planets which are not going to be habitable, and finally an asteroid belt. The last thing to do is to pretty this up by turning on the Sheets and Effects. So click over here on Sheets and Effects, click on Activate Sheets and Effects and make sure you've got the Cos System Small selected and click on OK. And let's redraw that. You can now see that the orbit lines are nicely faded and so forth. So that's the heart of creating yourself a lovely system map.